Okay, so hear me out. I bought another 3D printer for some hobby projects, and things continue to spiral out of control. Now I'm building turbo machinery from scratch. They don't tell you when you buy a 3D printer, it will become a lifelong addiction from which you will never recover. The only limiting factor for me is cramped space. This is, I believe, a good thing. In this case, I bought a resin printer to learn about SLA printing process. I tried printing aerodynamic components like wings and helicopter blades with the FDM printer, but the results were poor. I won't say I'm unhappy with this turbo impeller I designed. I'm also very impressed with the results using the 0.4 millimeter nozzle in PETG. The fastest motor I have is 5,000 RPM, which is not really enough to develop sufficient boost on a compressor. But it does move air. My original intention was to build a coanda thruster with a turbo compressor in the center of a duct with air flying out radially. But after doing the math, I need about 50 meters per second of airspeed along the surface of a flat disc uh, to reduce the air pressure enough for any meaningful thrust. Also, the effect is limited because the air slows down as it expands radially. This means lower pressure differentials and lower thrust. After watching a recent This Old Tony video about air knives, I realized the slots I was using were far too large. There's basically no way to achieve what I want with 3D printed parts. And Tony already covered the material, so I gave up there. Still, I wanted to make this video to share the parts I made and some of the lessons I learned about resin printing. I'll include links in the description to the Onshape projects where you can find all the parts you see here. Let's start with things I already knew. 3D printed parts leak air everywhere. While I've had some limited success with water pump parts, air is free to move about the cabin. No amount of O-rings help with this, and any kind of grease just adds friction. 3D printing process leaves terrace geometry, which makes for highly turbulent flow. Uh, more footage on this in a future video. If we look closely, you can clearly see the 200 micron step size. Now, things I learned. Resin prints warp easily. This is the same part printed in resin. The warping you see here is likely due to my inexperience in orienting parts properly. This one had a suction problem when I printed it perfectly flat. I mean, duh, it's basically a suction cup. After it failed the first time, I tried with a small angle of about 10 degrees. And this one warped and ripped free of some of its supports. Also, resin prints still have terrace geometry. Here, you can see this effect. The layers are 50 micron, but you can easily see the polygon tessellation artifacts from the STL export process. It is better than the FDM prints, but still visible. And resin prints are messy and smelly. I ran these prints in the bathroom with the door closed and the fan running full time. My house still smelled like fumes anyway. Cleanup requires rinsing in a vat of isopropyl and unused resin must be collected and poured carefully back into its bottle. Curing requires sunlight or a UV curing station. All of this requires gloves, apron, painter's mask, the whole deal. It's a lot of work. And for what? Do the parts work together to produce meaningful pressure at the exhaust? Uh, no. <laughs> I tried attaching a YouTube anemometer, not that YouTube, this other YouTube, uh, to measure pressure, but the water didn't move. This means either the tube is too small to fight surface tension, or the pressure is too low to measure, or both. Either way, I found more ways it doesn't work. <laughs> Edison would be proud. I think it would generate pressure at about 20,000 RPM, but I don't want to break my house, so I'm going to leave it at that. With each of these experiments, I learned something new, and hopefully so do you. After all, that's why we're here. And remember... When mistakes are welcome, growth is guaranteed.